Good morning. It's 10 now. Yeah, I actually woke up earlier um, because the truck outside was idling for a long time uh, and I had to pee and then I slept again. Mm. But how was sleeping in the leaf? It was wonderful. It was simply amazing because all you have to do is just keep the car running and then the air conditioning would just run. So it's more or less like um, like camper mode in Tesla. Yeah, so simple as that, you know. Uh, many cars uh, actually has problems uh, like, like the E28, the DS3, uh, it will power off the HVAC after a while. HVAC stands for heat ventilation AC, which is basically climate control. Um, and then uh, same with the uh, I-Pace, it will also power off the, I don't remember the power of the car or whatever. And the e-tron I believe also doesn't allow the car to kind of idle, you know. But many, many other cars, they can do that. So that's great. Like the Leaf, perfect. Uh, and as for comfort, well, it has plenty of space. You see, I typically in many cars, I use the partial shelf to put my phone here or whatever. Uh, and uh, also in many cases, I can use the Model 3 uh, window shades uh, from Evonex. Uh, I can use them to block the sun. And some of you guys might be wondering, ah, oh, but Bjorn, why don't you use uh, a face mask? Then you don't have to block. Okay, uh, I'm not sure how to explain this, but um, you see, you see this? Try to sleep because the sun comes up early in Norway. Try to sleep like this with a face mask uh, when the sun is burning in your face and body. Why do you think truck drivers that have curtains in the truck when they sleep? Hmm? All right, and look. Uh, this one is from last night and uh, this one is now and you see that the temperature has dropped by about 15 degrees in the top end and then 13 degrees in the mid and yeah so this is great man yeah uh, hopefully we can get back without too much rapid gate uh, and then also this one here the remain you see we spend exactly four kilowatt hour during um, eight hour well, more than eight hour, yeah, but that's a nine hour. So that translates to uh, about 450 watts, uh, if I remember correctly, roughly. So not too bad, yes. Uh, so, and then you can see it's the charge given from 85% to 79% roughly. So, uh, okay. So I guess now we'll take the ferry then. We have to drive south a little bit, 10, 15 minutes, take the ferry. But the ferry over here goes every 15 minutes, so no big deal, yes. And I still don't know where to charge, let me see. 150 kilometers, I plotted in uh, Moi, well that's including the ferry. But we still have 284 kilometers of range, I still don't know where I have to charge. I will just drive until I'm down to 10%, I guess.
we are now at Shell Vige uh, juicing up. So I came with a little low juice, but that's fine. So, you know, the last time I charged was um, at Oxdal yesterday. And now we're charging here, so we draw almost 300 kilometers. We had to subtract the, the ferry, but that's pretty good, man. So on the way here, I would consider stopping at some other places, but I saw that they were occupied. And this is the strength of the leaf, the newest one leaf, is that it can drive so far. So I could just squeeze it, okay, arrive here with a little bit low state of charge, but that's fine. So now I'm going to have lunch, which is uh, bread with banana and some fruit and juice. So, oh yeah. And you know what? Since yesterday, I traveled 900 kilometers and I had four charging stops. So, you know, it could, I could probably squeeze out three charging stops if I wanted to, because you've seen in the past, I can easily drive 300, even 350 kilometers between stop. So it would actually be fun to try to charge the car to 95% here and then go straight home. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I might would stop, you know, if I would stop, it's because I kind of need to pee. So this trip, I feel like I have to hold it to get to the next stop because I want to stop, but the car doesn't need to stop. Yeah. All right, let's enjoy lunch then. Uh, we've been charging for 36 minutes, you see the counter there. And we're getting 19 kilowatt. What the heck? The battery is not that hot. I mean, it was uh, warmer yesterday. I wonder what the heck is wrong here. Um, I saw it started throttling early and I thought, okay, that's rapid gate, but this is... This can't be rapid gate. 19 kilowatt. What the heck? Let me let me change stall. We have a charger there. We have we have two more chargers over there. Uh, this is really weird, man. It shouldn't be like this. Okay, we change stall, and instantly, okay, uh -huh, uh -huh, there. And now we get 37 kilowatt. This is strange, man. Uh, so I'm not sure what, what's up with this, if it's a car or the charger, but uh, you should pay attention when you charge uh, in case it does this weird shit. See, I, I rarely get this kind of weird stuff when I drive other cars, uh, but uh, lately I haven't driven many cars with Chadamo plug. So maybe there's some, some cheat with the Chadamo or something wrong with that one, yes. Fortum, fix it. Okay, I don't know. I don't know if it's a car or the charger. Yeah, but let's see now. Just checking if it throttles again or whatever, but no, you see now it stays at 37 kilowatt. Yeah, see? Huh. We are now on the new autobahn north of, um, what's the place going again? Arendal, yes. So um, it's 110 zone here, but I don't dare driving more than, uh, well, this is about 108 real speed. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it thinks it's 80 zone here, but um, I'm a little bit surprised because the battery hasn't cooled down much at all. It's still hovering around 47 degrees, but um, I suspect that it's the bottom that cools, or. I, I don't know how the passive cooling works, but it could seem like the bottom cools down first and then it cools down uh, on top, something like that. But uh, soon enough, uh, we will hit the slow stretch around here and whatever. And then uh, hopefully we'll cool down the battery to about 40 degrees. <laughs> yeah, then we get okay charging speed. We need one more charging stop. Yeah.
we are 28 kilometers away from Grelan, that's the next charging stop. And um, we have 11% left, so ideally we want to arrive with about 10%, maybe 5% of this car, I'm not sure. Um, so I see that if I go too deep, then I build up some extra heat, uh, which is unwanted. But uh, I noticed one thing, though, is that uh, ever since we left the previous charger, we have barely cooled down the battery. So it's still at 46, uh, whatever. So I found a bus I'm going to draft behind. Uh, I was cruising on the motorway. I was cruising on 100. Now I have to do about 90-ish. Uh, no, not even 90. Uh, so yesterday was a completely different scenario because then we could drive on, on typical slow Norwegian roads. But today, we have these nice motorways and even if you cruise at 100, that's not slow enough. You probably have to cruise at 80 to 90 kilometers per hour to cool down the battery. And also again, it's not too hot outside. See, it's only 20 degrees Celsius. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, one last stop then. We are now at, uh, what is this place called again? Sukukei Nishishke. I'd never been there before. So I bailed out. I didn't want to go to Grelland because I was getting kind of low on state of charge. Um, but we are getting 27 kilowatt. Oh, I, was, you know, I was hoping that we wouldn't rapid gate this trip, but then towards the end, yeah, it happened. So uh, would it be better if I kept going to the next one? Um, actually, it could be worse because um, when the state of charge drops, the voltage drops, and then um, to maintain the same speed, uh, the car needs to pull more amps to maintain the same power, you know, because voltage times uh, amp equals the power. And then with increased current, uh, it also increases the heat loss. Actually, it's a squared. It's like I multiplied by R uh, uh, power of two or something. So, so the basically the heat loss increases as the deeper you go, especially in the in the low end, because towards the end the voltage drops more than uh, in the high end, and that means more current flowing through the system. So actually, it might be worse if we kept going to uh, to the next one. Yeah, but this is the last charging stop, so I don't want to fiddle around too much. Uh, try to stop one more time, whatever. No, no. We just charge enough here. But oh man. Well, the good thing is that I'm charging at Grön Kontakt and Grön Kontakt pricing is kilowatt hour base plus a time component. If I was charging at Fortum, that's purely time based, then that's a bad deal for rapid gating leaf. Now, I worked out that at 27 kilowatt at Fortum, you will pay 6.9 yeah, nook per kilowatt hour and the Grön Kontakt is 5.7. So it's it's slightly better here. <laughs> and then, okay, I have 20% discount in Grand Talk, so it's okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, just slack here a little bit then. What? 21 kilowatt. We've been here half an hour. She was the oh. Okay, but I think we have enough now. Uh, yeah, we should have enough, okay. We are back home in Oslo now, and before I came here, I went to Soko K to test the charging. I just was just want to see, and uh, I actually received 27, uh, no, 24 kilowatt, but I suspect that it wouldn't last too long, like I've seen before, uh, and then it will throttle to 20 kilowatt or whatever. So I worked out that if you charge at Fortum, 
because it's purely a time based, then uh, it will cost 9.3 nook per kilowatt hour. And then Circle K, uh, no, and it's going to talk this 6.7, but Circle K is only 4.5. Well, only, um, only 4.5 in this case. So Circle K is the cheapest one because it's pure kilowatt hour price. So pro tip to you, if you have a rapid getting leaf, you want to charge at Circle K. Well, or if you go for Grand Contact and you have 20% discount, then that is actually more or less the same as uh, Circle K, yeah. <laughs> but okay, so I, I should summarize this. Oh, what the heck? This thing fell down. Oh. I should summarize that. Um, how was it again? Well, hold on, hold on, let me just adjust here. The trip was fairly nice yesterday. And yesterday is a typical scenario for many Norwegians is that you will travel and when you drive and then you stop and then you go sightseeing and then the car just stands there doing nothing. And then you go, so uh, maybe my trip yesterday was even corner case, but you saw that it could do uh, 500, no, it was more, it was 600 kilometers something yesterday, just fine, no problem at all. Yes, okay, at the very end, I was getting a little bit of rapid gate, um, but not too bad. I was getting 35 kilowatt or whatever, versus 45, like I should get. But that was fine. And then uh, overnight, because I fast charged, then uh, it built up more heat. So if you can slow charge overnight, then it's better. Because then you, you give the car time to cool down and you don't add that extra charging. It, it, it's basically those charging sessions, they add heat and then, I mentioned, mentioned this before, you know, if you drive hard, like I kind of do, um, then you also build up heat and you spend the energy faster. So it's, it's like a down spiral. So, but if you drive slow, you cool down the battery more and you spend less energy. And then you have to charge less because each charging session also adds heat and then the heat builds up and you can't get rid of it. Uh, well, you can, but it takes very long time. So, but if you have two consecutive days like I have where, where you travel a lot, um, then it kind of, the car struggles. But, you know, this, um, yesterday was a typical chill day, but then uh, today I simulated a typical pure transport day where I just drive and there was no sightseeing, no stopping around, whatever. So it's also uh, realistic in a way. It depends, you know, it always depends. Um, but yeah. But so that's about the rapid gate. But when it comes to the comfort, uh, this car is fairly quiet. You know, that's good. Uh, good, good. Uh, well, how do they say it? it's it's okay ride. Yes, it's comfortable ride. It's not sporty ride. So it's not like the E two eight or or Taycan or whatever or Tesla. But it's very comfortable. Yes, but you can feel it will sag a little bit in the corners. Uh, so you might like it or you might not like it. Uh, my, uh, me personally, I don't like it. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, sleeping in the back. So finally I tried it and it was a good experience. Lots of space in the back. Next time, I, if it was next time, I would probably take off the partial shelf and stack it somewhere. So then we have more space in the back there. So yes, uh, so overall, you know, good experience, except for the rapid gate. But again, if you wanna do uh, some vacation with the Leaf, uh, this one, the 62 kilowatt hour, then you should place some, uh, a cool down day or something, you know, a chill day for yourself and the car. And then you, this shouldn't be any problem. Yeah. So. Anyway, um, I think I beat the dead horse enough now. So uh, <laughs> yes, just wait for the revenge, revenge of the Aria then, yes. No, yeah, but anyway, that's gonna be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.